So let us start with your practical where we are going to create your VNet and we are going to configure our VNet using your Azure portal. So let us begin with it. So here we are going to show you like how we can create our virtual network using our portal. So into a portal, you know, at the left hand side, you can see all the products and services which your Azure provides you. Along with that, you also get a dashboard where you will find everything what you have created. Like if you have created any particular resource, you will find all the resources listed over here or directly you can create a resource from here itself. Same way you can create over new dashboard by clicking over here. You can edit your dashboard. You can share your dashboard. You can full screen your dashboard so that you can have a look on it. Same way you can exit the full screen. You can clone your dashboard and delete the same. So here this is about your dashboard and on the top bar you can see it is your Microsoft Azure. This is the search bar you have. You can search for your resources, services or any documentations you have. This is for alerts and notifications. So if you make any changes, it will notify you on this particular bell button. You can click on this bell button. It is showing you this is the credit limit you have. So this is the notification I have as of now. Same way if you are using any kind of services. So during this particular services, it will provide you the information of the status of the service, whether it is in progress or it has been completed. If it isn't completed, all the list which is completed, all the service which you have configured will be appeared in the completed and all complete, incomplete or in process services you will be able to see over here. Same way if I move into the next, this is the partial CLI. So if you don't have any bash mode or if you don't have any of your portal or any of your CLI mode, you can directly use this particular bash. You can directly connect to your bash Linux or you can use a PowerShell windows. So if you click on bash Linux, you will take you to your storage. First of all, you need to connect to storage to store this data. And once you create the storage, you will be able to use this bash. Same way, you can also use a PowerShell directly on the portal. So you're not dependent on your machine for using even your command line mode or your partial mode. Everything is available over here into your cloud shell. Same way we can move into the settings. If you want to make any settings regarding your color of your dashboard or this particular portal, you can do this by using or selecting different themes you have. You can select the different themes and you can see these are different themes generally we have into your Azure. Same way you also have you log me out when inactive. So you can keep different options. Like if you are not using this Azure after one hour automatically, it should log out. If you keep never, it will never log out. Same with the theme settings generally you have. This is the language setting you have and the region. So right now I'm going to select my region to regional format to US English, right? And uh, you can click on apply for making the settings here. You can also give the feedback of your Azure over here. So you can give the feedback if like you are happy with your Azure, you can click on smiley over here and you can write this, this like we already like to use your Azure. I'm very confident to use your Azure and I love using it. Same way if you have any kind of feedback where generally you found debug or you're facing any difficulty, you can also use a smiley offside smiley and you can write about it so either you are satisfied or not you can define here same way this feedback you can submit to your microsoft same way if you have any query or if you have any question you can directly click on your question mark this will help and support or tab is given to you you can go here click on this and you can get and help and support options where you can create your own support request you can define the issues what you have, in which area you have, whether in billing, technical, quota, subscription management, which kind of problems generally you have, you need to select it. It is asking you for the subscription. Then the service. Now, again, if I talk about your subscription, very first you should know, right now we are in trial. Now, after your trial is completed or uh, when you are subscribing for any other services so that time you will be able to see the list of all the subscriptions 
So now, if the technical problem is regarding my development, you should click on the door subscription in which you have a development, right? So uh, while selecting the subscriptions, keep in mind that you are going to select only those subscriptions where generally you are facing the problem. And then you can define this service, right? So which service generally you are having a problem, so you can define the service like I'm not able to create any of your containers or any of your remote applications I'm not able to access so it is showing you the support plan it's getting loaded wait a while okay so these are the support plans you can try resolving this particular resources or sorry these issues by yourself upgrade your support plan so that your Microsoft team can support you for it so um, you can check out for recommended forms or you can also talk to us by uh, your Azure support right once you have done with it we can directly connect to our forums and then we can ask for the questions generally we have right so this is what exactly the support generally we have over here now if suppose I want to um, move into my service where I'm going to create my VNet so for that as I said back to the dashboard here you have all the resources right you can either drag down search for your networks or you can go for new and then again it will be showing you the complete options over here on the marketplace so right now I'm going to click on the virtual networks so this is what exactly we have click on it where you are moving into your virtual networks now as of now we haven't created any of your virtual network over here so we need to create our virtual network for what we are here right so I'm going to create a virtual network either by clicking on this particular button or we can directly click on add so I'm going to click on add so while you click on add it's going to ask you certain questions you need to answer those questions very first what is the name of your network you want to define and ensure that while defining the name of your network you have to provide the complete detail of your network so that you can easily find out uh, this VNet or this particular network which you are going to form over here is for which particular area or which particular division of your organizations right so um, ensure that the name actually provides you the detail of the network and also while you are defining the name of your virtual network you should not provide any space in between like if I'm going to define the name as VNet1 so you can see here it's showing me the error mark right so this particular warning is showing you the name must begin with a letter or a number and with a letter number or underscore you can do anything it may contain only letters numbers underscore periods or hyphen but not space if suppose I generally just use this particular vnet1 as a vnet1 now I don't have any error you can see that green tick mark which shows me that whatever you have entered is in correct format next you have that is address space now again if I talking about your address space very first thing you should know that here you have already uh, defined your CIDR so you may be knowing about your CIDR it is nothing but your uh, subnets what exactly we create this is called as your classless interdomain routing number so this is a number it's going to use this is the address space it's going to use for your network if you want to change this particular network also you can change it right so like if I want to use my C class of network you can use Ninety-two one sixty-eight 168.0.10 for example or 0, 0 slash 24 I can no issues into it I can also use my public IP address I can so for practical reason uh, as you should understand your subnetting well first of all to you know subnet your network so understand that well and then you can use it so for practical reason and showing you how you can create a subnet I'm just going to use my default one and then the subscription free trial as of now we haven't subscribed for any other particular subscriptions of your Azure next is your resource group so we need to define the resource group if you have created so you can use the existing resource group and define the existing resource group name 
and this is creating a resource group now what is resource group resource group is a location or the you know the space where you are going to keep your resources so here you can create multiple resource groups or a single resource group but whenever you are mapping your own resources to a particular resource group you can map one resource to one resource group so right now I don't have any resource group so very first I'm going to create a resource group in this wizard itself I'm going to create a resource group with name rg1 okay so this is my resource group name and then the location where you are going to keep your resource group as these are the locations these are the regions we generally have into your Azure where generally your Azure setups are located and where you can keep your resources now I'm sitting in India if I want to store or recreate my resource group into UK South I can into West UK I can so sitting over here I can locate my resource anywhere so right now I'm going to define it in India itself if you want so I'm going to define it into your central India then subnet so as of now uh, here we have defined the network right and this slash 24 is nothing but it's showing you this is a subnetted class a network has a default subnet as 8 bit for your subnet but here we have defined 24 that means it is subnetted so either if you want to use a default one you can use the default one here or you can define the different range for it so right now I'm going to use the default and this is a range this is again the default range next we are going to create it and one more thing like here we have defined the default range but next time when I'm going to create the next network that time I need to change this range because if you are using the same range it won't be allowing you to do so because you will be creating two different subnets at a time so it won't allow you to duplicate it so hence it will ask you to change the subnet that I'm going to show you as well so here I'm going to create and also pin this to dashboard and create it it takes a little time to create so the couple of seconds we need to wait and here you can see it has been created and it is deploying in progress so you can see it is on dashboard this option we will have on dashboard and in notification area you can see it is showing you this is getting deployed now it is not completed right so now it is successfully completed now you can find it into your uh, completed sections as well now already it was and we have already seen it so uh, we are not able to now here you can see it is showing you vnet1 so it has opened up the complete vnet1 wizard where it is showing you the complete detail of your vnet which you have created so it is showing you this vnet has been created into your rg1 the resource group which we have created and it is located into your central India it is a free trial subscription we have and this is a subscription ID we have this is the address space we have used and we haven't defined any DNS server so uh, the DNS server is provided by your Azure itself now we don't have any connected device to it as we know we are creating a virtual network so we should have some connected devices so that we are going to see later like how we can connect our devices to it same way the activity logs and the settings you can see the address space like if I want to change my address space I can right so uh, I can remove this address space or delete this address space and add a new address space over here we can connect the devices from here we can add the subnets if I want to add more subnet to this so here you have the available address that is 251 which means I can connect 251 systems or two different uh, 251 virtual machines into this particular network so it is allowing me to connect this much machines next is your DNS servers like if you have any DNS server you can so it is a uh, as you provided if you have any own or your own DNS server you can customize it and add your own DNS server name as well peering connecting to different networks if you want that we have already discussed they can uh, connect to different PVC's networks so that we can do even vnet to vnet we can service endpoints you can create your endpoints here properties you can see right so these are the things what exactly you have it is showing you the resource ID where exactly it is located 
and the resource group name trial and subscription id so this is what exactly we have seen how we can create your vnet and this vnet we can directly connect directly through your dashboard or directly by moving into your virtual networks and to virtual networks we have all the list of all the vnet we have created just click on vnet1 and you will be back to the same page same way as we know we have created different resources right we have also created rg1 resource group so if you want to find all the resources you can search over here all resources or all resource groups you can also find all resource groups over here or all resources you can glue so it will show you all the resources you have right so it is showing you the resource group we have there is a resource group name rg1 vnet1 this is a resource you generally contain same way you can find the resource groups you generally cre have created so i'll just move into resource groups from here you find this resource groups and this is a resource group which you have created that is rg1 and under rg1 the devices you have connected you will be able to see over here right now we have just connected vnet1 so here we have seen how we can create our vnet1 and simultaneously we have also created a resource group under which i am going to keep my resources here so here we have completed looking how we can create our vnet1 into our portal so into next video we are going to see how we can create our virtual networks using our cli and portals